Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're studying Romans today. We're in chapter 12, starting with verse 3. Now, verses 3 through 8 are the pa- is the passage that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, and if you've ever been a part of a spiritual gifts class, this was often referenced. Uh, I would like you to think that a spiritual gifts class is not the number one reason why Paul wrote these words but rather he had a divided church. And they had been divided by culture. They had adopted the culture of Rome in the first century. Jews and Christians were at odds with one another because the culture pushed them apart. Paul wanted them to come together. We're recording this on Wednesday after the Tuesday night debate that took place yesterday. I didn't listen to it, Rudy did, and I'm not gonna refer to it much other than to say As a son of a politician, I know that if you're trying to get elected, you have to say, I'm a better person than my opponent, therefore vote for me. You have to divide the voting public and get their votes rather than the other person get the votes. One of the ways that in our current environment, maybe it's been this way all along, uh, to get votes is to use fear. Uh, If you elect my opponent, life as you have known it will no longer be the same that's the fear and and both sides of the political aisle use that technique if you vote for them wow your life is going to change and not for the better the church needs to hear a voice of unity that jesus is not in the business of dividing but he's in the business of bringing people together for the purpose of god's kingdom And so Paul is dealing in the first century with what we have to deal with in 2024. And that is, let's not let our culture divide us, but let's let the good news of what God has done unite us. So with that being said, let me read this, okay? Verse 3, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Pride separates pride says i'm better than you i know more than you and that's the divisiveness of politics don't think more highly than you ought to think but think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that god has assigned for as in one body we have many members and not all the members have the same function so we who are many are one body in christ and individually we're members of one another We have gifts differing according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion of faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher in teaching, exhorter and exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The point is, and I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow with another set of his imperatives to the church, but the point is we are one body, we have many members, let's use our different our different flavors, our different functions, our different gifts that God has given us to do what? To extend the good news of God's kingdom. So Rudy, jump in and go from wherever you'd like to go with that. I think Paul is kind of coming back, is kind of building a enlarged understanding of Genesis where God tells man that when he, be, when uh, you, you, with your wife, you become one flesh. Right. And we don't really think about that a lot. And so, in some some degrees, we are divided, even in thinking of our selves, because ultimately, what God is saying, you're one. Well. To, to put a microscope on that, Paul is saying that to the believers. Mm-hmm. That even though it seems we're all over the place, we're ultimately one. We're one, we're one piece of each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if that's true, getting back to finding out your spiritual gifting a little bit, because Paul certainly did not write this for a spiritual awareness class no but it does bring us back to where 
what has what is the mercy of God in our life? Mm-hmm. And so, searching ourselves to find out what the preeminent uh, aspect of God's grace in our life is is very helpful. But but there's not there it never is exclusive to all the other giftings. Mm-hmm. Uh, for most of the time I have found in my life, the giftings that I have basically are the ones that have been used most, but it doesn't exclude a minority portion of my giftings to be in, a, in the first place in some other situation. Mm-hmm. So you can't say that my gifting is here, therefore I'm excluded from that because you really don't know for sure because God's able to do a lot of things. He can do anything he wants with you. That's right. If God can talk through a donkey, he can use me. Uh, Amen. 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 So he talks about very first line, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. And then he goes down and he lists these different gifts. And historically, the church has used gifting for preachers and others as a point of pride. I have this position, you don't. I, I've been gifted by this, you haven't been. And that can so easily become a point of pride. And as a person who's been in the ministry for a long time, I know how tempted it is to think I'm somebody, okay? But he says right down here in verse six, but the gifts are according to grace. If it's a gift and God gave it to me, I can't use it as a point, point of pride. And, and so it's, it's important that we see that. Now let's flip that around. Let's take the person that, that may think I, I really don't have much to offer God. Are you serious? You know, the truth is we all, if we've been given by God something, then, then we're worthwhile. And, and again, it's all by gift. And so the person who says, I don't think I have a gift, needs to rethink that and say, God, use me however you want. Uh, Dwight L. Moody, one of the greatest preachers of the 1800s, started off as a shoe salesman. You know, it's, it's not like he was this great gifted orator. He was somebody that God came and met and transformed. Uh, there's a young man. I'm gonna stop preaching here. And give you a second. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Yeah. And so continue. Young, young guy in, in the church yes. I pastored in Louisiana, couldn't read, and so we did a mission trip. He couldn't teach kids because he couldn't read, but he gave kids piggyback rides. The last time I went to Louisiana, I met him. I was preaching, and he came to the service where I was, and he was dressed in just an old work coat and blue jeans and stuff like that. Uh, what you up to? I'm pastoring a little church out in the country. You know, he had a handful of people that he was ministering to. He took what God gave him and used it to the max. Let me shut up, let you have the last word and pray for us. Well, it's... Sometimes it doesn't seem as though the gifting that we have uh, does much right but the fact is is that a lot of the time that you're thinking that is because you're in the way Mm -hmm. and this is extremely true in my life I get an understanding and I run with it I got it thank you very much and just keep on going and I believe that that has helped me back uh, it hasn't held God back because there's thousands and millions of people with with gifting. Right. And so you have to wonder if you feel as though you're not using your gifting well. Mm-hmm. Is it because you're in the way? Yeah. And I suspect that's probably the truth because God cannot fill that 
without you basically allowing him to help you. Yeah. Father, uh, we do thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Father, help us to know you. Father, we pray that you help us to know ourselves, that we might serve you better, mm -hmm. uh, and not be content with better, but go for best. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Really, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.